Hi, welcome to New Hope Community Church Online. The sermon you are about to hear was originally given by Pastor Chuck Wilson. New Hope Community Church, to know, to live, and to share Jesus Christ. Title for today is Fireproof Your Faith. Fireproof Your Faith, 1 Kings 18, 23 to 24. And uh, I have a confession to make while we're talking about fires. I have a confession to make. I'm a, I'm a pyro. Um, I love fires. I love fire. I, 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 we, know who, we know who we are. We, we're pyros. Just ask Nancy and the fire marshal. Uh, I, I, that's a whole other story. Uh, I always have at my fireplace, there's a fire going. And then when there's no fireplace, there's a fire pit going. Anybody drives by, you can always see a fire going at our house, smoke or fire. Uh, when I go back to the farm, 24-7, literally, the, far, the fire is going at a bonfire site. It's going the whole time I'm home for three days. It never goes out. Never goes out fire. Uh, I just love fires. As a kid, we used to camp out. As a kid, we had a special little campsite and right by a little pond and along a creek, and then there's a woods, and, and just had this great spot where all the kids in the neighborhood would, it seemed like almost every night in the summer, we'd all, they'd all congregate, we'd cook our hot dogs and, and have a great time cooking and, and uh, you know, camping out. And early in the morning, we had this big fire going. Early in the morning, uh, I'd get up and go get the cows because the pasture wasn't far from there. I'd, I'd run the cows up to the barn for my dad early in the morning because we woke up very early uh, camping. And, f- and on the farm, there are many big fires. I'll probably show- bring some videos soon to show you. Because you, you've all heard of bonfires, but you've never seen anything until my dad does it. Uh, it's shocking. They would burn for days and days. Sometimes fire trucks would show up. Uh, there, you know, he has a tractor pushing more up. On the, you, you, I'll, I'll bring a video. You won't believe it uh, till you see it. But my most, my most memorable fire ever was one time when I was... I'm not even sure how old I was, maybe 13, and my brother Todd was 11, around that. And we were down at that campsite making fires and burning it, and it got bigger and bigger. And as it got bigger, there were some vines hanging down. They started catching on fire that were up into the trees, and they started burning. And we're like, oh, that's cool. And so we let it keep burning and burning. And then it started moving down the creek, which wasn't a big deal because there was a lot of brush and vines, and it was just kind of congested. And sometimes we would burn it out. It wouldn't hurt the trees, but it would just kind of burn the vines and, and brush. And it started moving down the creek and we were all excited we were following it watching it go down the, down the creek and uh and uh we said let's let it just burn out the hedgerow for my dad you know he, he appreciate it you know and so it, it's going down but while we were watching it going this direction following it down the creek and it kept going 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 the wind shifted and i we weren't really paying attention it shifted and while we're watching it this direction it actually started moving the other way down the other around the pond and into the woods uh, and, and it moved into the woods and it started to catch some of the trees on fire in the woods. And, and we noted, finally we saw it and we were running over there and we had, you know, our shirts, we were hitting it and beating it and we we're trying to fight this fire because it was catching the woods on fire, right? And it was just at the edge of the woods and it was starting to catch some trees. And I never forget the horrible feeling. We're gonna lose the woods. And it's a big deal. These trees, a lot of trees, you know, it's a big deal. You know, woods. We're going to lose the woods. And I remember praying that foxhole prayer. God, please, please let the, please, whatever. If, if you help us get this out, I'll change my life. You know, you know one, of those, one of those prayers. You know, you know how we always pray those prayers. And, and it was crazy. Just when I was ready to give up, really, I was ready to give up. It was a horrible feeling. The wind shifted again. And it went back the other way. And then we were able to fight what was hitting, and we were able to put it out, and it didn't spread into the woods. I'll never forget the huge relief that it, 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 that it, when it when it went out, when it went out, and we saved the woods, and it was good. And I never remember thinking, I remember thinking, I think we might get away with this. You know, remember remember that foxhole prayer? You know, I think we might get away with this. And uh, that's when I heard the explosion. Uh, the that's when the truck exploded. Uh, my dad's friend had left a, uh, a truck parked in the hedgerow down a ways, you know, and he would bring it and he would get wood and he'd bring it back and forth to his place and then he'd leave the truck parked there. And, uh, and uh, I, I, uh, the, uh, while we were fighting the woods and re- 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 celebrating, it, it actually caught that truck on fire and, and, and then it exploded the gas tank while we were sitting there. So then uh, I, uh, it, was, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Uh, and so... Uh, so then I had to figure out, okay, how, how are, am I going to explain this to my dad? You know, and I got to figure this out. So I went to my dad, and he didn't even see the smoke, or if he did, he probably figured those kids are doing something again. And so I went and said, Dad, 
we were burning out the hedgerow for you. We decided to clear it out for you. Uh, and, and, and we didn't realize Lee's, Lee's truck uh, was there and it, it, it caught fire and it, and it blew up. <laughs> How many of you have had to tell that to your dad, right? Yeah? So, and he said, he goes, that's his own fault. I told him to move it a long time ago. I couldn't believe it. I like, am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? And, and it was crazy, right? Unbelievable. And Lee came a couple days later, a friend of our family. He came a couple days later. I was out in the barn with my dad. We're milking cows. And he came in really mad. He heard what happened. He came and he goes, why'd you blow up my truck? Why'd you burn it up? You know, he's really not happy, right? Who would be? So uh, he didn't have it insured. So anyway, uh, I said, I said, it's your own fault. You shouldn't have left it there. My dad was right there. He backed me up. He already said it to you. So he just kind of like walked away all smoking mad, right? Uh, it's unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. Well, I have an even more unbelievable fire story from you here in 1 Kings 18. And we, were gonna, we will see how important fires are biblically. Fires are very important biblically. That's probably why I like fire so much. It's like a sign of my spirituality or something, right, Ed? You and I, spiritual guys, right? That's why we like fire so much. All right. So they're up on top of Mount Carmel. Elijah's showdown, 450 to 1 versus the prophets of Baal. You know, remember, we've been building up to this. If you haven't been here, listen to the sermons because each one builds on the last. And so Elijah comes up with a God test to find out who the real God is, the God test, okay? Let's pray. Father, we just pray as we look at your word now that your word would, would speak to us and move in our hearts and impact us. And we pray for your mercy and grace for this to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so here's the showdown. And uh, 1 Kings 18, 23 to 24, where he says... Get two bulls for us, let them choose one for themselves, and let them cut it into pieces and put it on wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, and, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of the Lord your God. I'm sorry, you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah has a fireproof plan. Who is the real God? This is the God test. And all the people said, what you say is good. They finally found their tongues. Remember they wouldn't answer? Remember when he challenged them and they didn't answer? They were undecided. Remember that whole thing? And Elijah picks fire on purpose. He picks fire on purpose because Baal is the God of fire. He's the God of fire. He claimed to be Lord of the sun. The Lord of the sun. So Elijah makes an offer they can't refuse. It's like saying, pick your own weapon. Only Elijah picked it for him. He knew what they would pick, fire. He, he, the fire is exactly what Baal is known for. It's all, he's fire. He also picked fire. Elijah also picked fire so that God could totally expose them. He could beat them at their own game. That's why he says, set no fire yourself, because they would have this little secret trick to starting fire and make the people think they were calling down fire from, you know, from Baal. And they would have this little trick. He says, set no fire. He was going to, we'll get into this more. He's not going to let them play any tricks here. And, and so he, he wants to beat them at their own game. The false prophets must either accept this challenge or acknowledge that Baal is the fraud. They have to accept it. Jehovah God has already shown his power over the rain, right? What are they dealing with? Three years of drought. He's already stopped the rain, which the prophets of Baal could not reverse. They couldn't reverse the curse that God had put on the nation because of their wickedness. And so he's already proved his power over rain. And now he's going round two is a trial by fire, by fire. And remember, Baal is the sun god of Fire. That's what he's known for. That's why he demanded, Baal demanded that the firstborn would be sacrificed to him. How? 2 Kings 16.3. We see what was happening at this time. This is why God is judging them. 2 Kings 16.3. Talking about Ahaz, the uh, king of Judah. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and even sacrificed his son in the fire. Following the detestable ways of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites, they would sacrifice their firstborn child in the fire. 
You wonder why did God send Israel into the promised land and wipe out the Canaanites? Because they were wicked. They were burning their children in fire. And now why is God going to knock the Israelites out of the land for quite a while? Because they were following the same wicked practice. It, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> right? Psalm, one, Psalm 106 says this. In Psalm 106 verse 37 it says, They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. They were sacrificing them to demons. The, the idols, the demons that were demanding this worship, that the people were believing they were gods, they, they, they hate human beings. We are created in God's image, and they hate us because of that. And they want to see us all dead. And they, and they detect the most helpless of all. The, the, kill, the killing of babies here and today is demonic. Watch the movie Unplanned. If you haven't seen it yet, go see the movie Unplanned. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's demonic. And God finally ultimately judged Israel and Judah, this was the main reason why he judged them. All the other sins, all the other sins we worry about, the main, the final straw for God was the killing of the babies. Beware USA today. Beware USA today. It's the killing of, the, of, the, of these babies. In Jeremiah 19, I'm going to read just nine, Jeremiah 19, 3 to 6 says this, and say, hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and people of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Listen, I'm going to bring a disaster on this place that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. For they have forsaken me and made this pl place made this a place of foreign gods. They have burned sacrifices to, in it to gods that neither they nor their fathers nor the kings of Judah ever knew. And they have filled this place with the blood of the innocent. They have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as offerings to Baal, something I did not command or mention, nor did it enter my mind. So beware... The days are coming, declares the Lord, when the people will no longer call this place Topeth or the Valley of Ben-Hinnon, but the Valley of Slaughter. God ultimately judged Israel and Judah because of the sacrifice of babies. That was the sign of their complete degeneration, that they had reached the tipping point of judgment, and that is what we are standing on the cliff today in the United States today. We're on the cliff. On the cliff. Baal was the demon god of fire. So God is going to use fire to judge Baal and his followers. A trial by fire to show the powerlessness of Baal and his followers. That they are pathetic, that they are helpless, that they are hopeless. And he's going to force their lie out into the open. Just like God is doing many places in the United States today, forcing many lies. The Unplanned movie is a great example of that. Forcing the lies out into the open so that people can see. Connect the dots for yourself. A lot of things are being exposed, aren't they? Elijah's goal is to give the people irresistible proof for Jehovah. That Jehovah is the one true God. And he's going to use fire. He's going to use fire. Fire is vital in the scripture. All over the scripture, God, fire is vital. God uses it often. He is the true God of fire. God, not Baal, the pretender. He's not even a God. He's a demon. But God uses fire. In Exodus 3, verse 2. In Exodus 3, verse 2. Well, I'm just going to. Uh, in Exodus 3, verse 2, God appeared to Moses in a... Fire, a burning bush, he appeared to him in a fire. In Exodus 13, 21, God led the Israelites through the wilderness by a pillar of fire. That's just a little way. Think of tornado of fire. That's what it was, a tornado. It's constantly spinning, burning fire. He, he, he appeared to them a pillar of fire. In Exodus 19, 18, God, I'll read that one. In Exodus 19, 18, God appeared to Moses... Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because of the Lord descended on it in a fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently. He appeared to Moses to give his law in a volcanic 
fire and a volcanic fire. In Leviticus 9, 23 to 24, when the priests first began their ministry, listen to what happened. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of the meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. When God accepted the first sacrifice, when the priests began their ministry, he sh fire came from God's presence. Think Raiders of the Lost Ark coming down, burned up the sacrifice. That's what happened. He did it by fire. God showed it. He accepted his sacrifice by, he accepted, now remember this, he accepted the sacrifice by fire. So in 1 Kings 18, when Elijah said, the God who answers by fire, it's all, con it's all f connect the dots. Why not water? I mean, they're in the middle of a three-year severe drought. Everybody's starving. They need water, right? What do the people think they need more? Fire or water? They all want, they're thirsty for water, right? But, but before the rain could fall, and we're going to see what happens. It does. Before the rain could fall, fire is needed first. First, the drought was God's judgment for wickedness. It showed God's wrath for sin, the wrath of God on sin. Hear me now. Before a sinner can be reconciled to a holy God, our holy God, the holy God, before a sinner can be reconciled to the holy God, first atonement must be made. First fire must fall. Atonement must be made. And atonement can only be made by the shedding of blood. From Genesis through Revelation, it's the shedding of blood that has to happen. Divine justice demands payment for broken law. Divine justice demands it for a broken law. It must be paid. And it must be paid either by the guilty party or by a substitute. By a substitute. We all have this desire for justice, don't we? It's innate in us. If we see something happen that's not fair, what do we say? That's not fair, even little kids. That's not fair. Something happens with a politician or a Hollywood star who gets in trouble and they don't get punished. What do we say? That's not fair, right? That's innate in us. That comes from God. That's, that's because we're made in God's image. And that comes from God. Divine justice demands a payment it's either by the guilty party or by a substitute an innocent substitute that's why the bull was slain that's why the bull was slain on mount carmel on mount carmel and that when then the bull after it was slain what did he say it had to be burned by fire that's why the sacrifices had to be burned up by fire either the fire must now get this either the fire must fall on the guilty people or it must fall on a sacrificial substitute. Either on the guilty people or the sacrificial substitute. That's what Romans 3 is all about. In Romans 3, 21 to 26, that's what it's all about. When he says in Romans 3, it says, But now, now follow this. Now remember what we've been talking about. But now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This Righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm going to read that again. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And here we go. And are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice. Because he, in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. God's justice demands punishment. But God put off that demand of divine punishment. He didn't wipe everybody out. He was waiting until Jesus Christ, the 
pro- the right time for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the perfect, innocent Lamb of God who came to die in our place. He waited for that time for Jesus to come down and to die in our place. The fire fell on Jesus Christ. The fire that was supposed to fall on us, the fire fell on Jesus Christ. It fell on him on the altar, which we call the cross. It fell on the cross and that resulted, look at this verse, it resulted in our atonement. Atonement by putting our faith in his blood. It takes blood for atonement. Jesus gave his blood so that we could be justified, so that we could be reconciled to God, so that we could be forgiven and washed clean. He gave his blood for our atonement. And we must all put our faith in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. If we don't put our faith in his sacrifice for us, then we are still liable to the fire. The fire that, has, that we can accept, the fire consuming Jesus or, and, and, and our sin, or we, or we have to face the fire. We, just, we have a decision to make. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 7 says this. This will happen. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will be punished with everlasting destruction. Shut up from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. We have a choice if we do not believe the gospel. If we don't put our faith in Jesus Christ, we can either let Jesus take that fire or we face it. Revelation 20. In Revelation 20 verse 15 it says this. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Is your name written in the book of life? Have you ever put your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you allowed Jesus Christ to take the fire on himself? Our sin, our punishment, God's wrath, the punishment. Have you allowed him to become your substitute? There is one way by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. Do you, have your sins been forgiven? Have they been washed? Have you become a brand new person in Jesus Christ? Do you have fireproof faith? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life life. Have you ever believed in Jesus Christ? Have you received that gift of life? And it starts the moment you put your faith in Jesus, you receive that life then, and it goes out throughout all of eternity, and we never have to face wrath. We never have to face fear ever again, because we are under Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. And as Christians, after we put our faith in Jesus Christ, after that, are we continuing to be fireproofed? Is our faith continued to be fireproof? We don't have to worry about hell and judgment anymore, but there's also a whole other fireproofing going on. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 3 to 7, it says this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Here here we go. In this you greatly rejoice, though now, though now, for a little while you may may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine. Talking about our faith here. May be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. That fire, that the fire is still, as we go through that refining fire, That refining fire, allowing God to burn out the garbage in our life, the sin in our life, the wrong, everything that God wants to remove in our life. And it's a lifelong process, isn't it? And look what he uses. The trials that we go through that burn out our faith, that show that our faith is genuine. 
genuine, that it shows people our faith for real. What do people, when do they really see our real faith? It's when we go through these, these trials and, and by faith and we let God refine us. And when people see us go through that, that's when they see Jesus for real. We can tell them all we want. But when they see us go through this and they see the reality of Jesus Christ in our life, that's when it becomes real to the people. Real. Are we allowing our faith to be fireproofed? Let's pray. How is God refining us this morning? Will we allow him to fireproof our faith? Will we surrender to what he's trying to do in and through us, in and through us? Praying, God, please make my faith real. Please make my faith evident. May it result in your glory, your praise. Maybe here today and you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Jesus, what he did on the cross, dying in our place as our substitute. Have you ever put your faith in? In him. Giving your life to him. Pray that simple prayer of faith. God, please forgive me. Forgive my sin. I repent. I turn and walk the other way. I put my faith in Jesus, your sacrifice for me, your substitute for me. I give my life to him. If you've prayed that prayer of faith, then something amazing has happened. You don't have to fear anymore. You now live by faith in Jesus Christ. And if you take that step of faith, I want to encourage you to let somebody know. Tell me on the way out, fill out the card, tell a friend or family member, anybody. Let someone know so that we could encourage you in your new life in Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that everyone here would know the one true God. That we would all be able to live without fear, putting our trust in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. What he did on the cross, what he did through the resurrection. And I pray that as we grow, that our faith would be fireproof. Proven, our faith would be proven by fire. That we would be refined. And you could use us in a powerful way to touch people with the love of Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name.